What's up everybody? Hope you all are doing well. Today I'm going to be revealing my newest mock. This is a movable motorized railroad swing bridge. The specialty of this swing bridge is that it is motorized using a classic Mindstorms era 9 volt compatible point motor. Goes through a series of gear reductions into a 56 tooth gear that was prevalent in city sets and technic sets back in the early 2000s. And this mechanism allows the nearly 64 stud long bridge to turn into position to line up for railroad movement. It is somewhat loosely based off a prototype location. That is a swing bridge in Indian Town, Florida on the CSX Auburndale sub. Evident by its 1920 style construction, you can see that there is some rust modeled using dark orange and medium nougat elements. Modernization features such as the kind of cable style barrier on the side using Lego string and one by two plates with handles. And I use flex track to allow the bridge to line into place with appropriate discontinuities in the track so that the bridge can open and close accordingly. The real inspiration of doing this was actually on Cal Winner's Key West extension layout. He has a swing bridge over Moser Channel on the Seven Mile Bridge. However, that bridge does not properly line up and lock. So the bridge stays closed, but I thought this would be a good idea to replicate this concept in LEGO and show it for instructional purposes. The gear movement is shown in this clip that I recorded when building this model. So this is the mechanism I was able to cook up to operate the swing bridge. So as you can see, there's quite some ample gear reduction going down from the 8 tooth to the 24 tooth a couple times. So that really increases the ratio by like three to the third. And then another small gear here, and I believe another 24 tooth under here, and then a 48, and now 56, but not without another reduction. So this reduction causes a swing bridge to operate at a pretty realistic speed. Quite slow, I would imagine. That's a turning clockwise, but we'll turn it counterclockwise. Either way, both functions are going to be valid because you're going to open and close the swing bridge for train movements. Really, this is actually what I believe is going to be the closing move. It turns at a pretty realistic speed. So naively, the bridge is free to spin a full 360 degrees around the entire axis. However, I employ two measures to allow it to lock into place when it's aligned with the railroad. One such is the use of these rubber stoppers, which are an actual Lego element that I have obtained in a few sets recently. Not sure where exactly I got these, but they're out there. <laughs> Trust my word for it. And the second is the use of Technic axles, which are pushed into place via a rotational mechanism. Using Technic axles is a surefire way that the bridge will remain sturdily locked and that trains will not derail when crossing over the water. So the railroad has actual aligning rails that guide along the tangent of the actual railhead to lock the bridge into place. But in Lego trains, that doesn't seem to be the most practical solution, at least not right now. So what I did is I contrived a couple of Technic axles inside using the screw gear worm assembly here, tie it up to a gear, and by turning the gear counterclockwise from the top, that's clockwise from the bottom, you can see that the locks gently slide out into place. Controlling the same mechanism here, we see the other lock retract as well. So once we're ready to open the bridge, I remove the locks from their position and I turn the power functions rechargeable battery box counterclockwise to spin the gears accordingly. You can also do this using a nine volt classic speed regulator. However, this is the more portable asset and just have to recharge the batteries and not worry about the possibly brittle 9 volt train wires. Not to mention that these power function wires are backwards compatible with the 9 volt train system. Every feature in the central uh, section here, in the central quai here, was designed to clear the bridge in its full rotational spin. So there is a clearance of about four bricks and one plate that is allowed for any feature that is added on the side, such as this ladder. 
A couple rare details are added here for added effect and visual appearance. So as you can see, the bridge has successfully been opened and now marine traffic can flow right through. To get it back into place, I just turn this power functions battery box clockwise and the bridge just simply does its thing. Notice that in the middle of the bridge span, you see a flexi track section. I use three flexi track sections to leave a total of four studs open, two of which are overlapped in the bridge with re-railers and two of which are outside the bridge and that's important so that the interlocking rail heads do not touch when the bridge is rotating into and out of position. As you can see, the railheads are barely missing each other as the bridge rotates into place. So I hope you have enjoyed this little video demonstrating a pretty neat feature of railroading that I decided to replicate in LEGO bricks. And as far as displaying this, since I am part of the Greater Florida LEGO Users Group, in order to incorporate into layout, you would probably need to do custom bench work. And this would likely be acting as sort of an industrial spur type of thing because the railroad layouts are always double tracked and this is a single track bridge. But if we get creative and if there's something like power functions only with one loop or one train running, we can do the reversing loop and this can be the uh, lead towards some sort of a peninsula where the train uh, loops back onto itself via kind of an end loop. Um, but otherwise this will likely just be static display. Maybe I'll just put a nice pretty train on it just like we have here with these Florida East Coast engines even though that's not the railroad that is crossing the St. Lucie Canal in Indian Town. But nonetheless I think this is a pretty neat addition and uh, maybe one day you will see it in a public event. Thanks for watching and if you want to see more creations more Florida and Miami themed creations, as well as build tips, set reviews and whatnot, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. I look forward to sharing more of these with you, but of course, gotta be in the know when these things come out. From HQ, till next time, build on everybody. This is TE, out.